Today I'm going to be doing a composite video modification to this Atari 2600 four switch console. What you're seeing right here is an actual authentic Atari. Um, there's a couple flashback type units available but this is uh, an actual Atari and it has a regular coaxial channel 3 output. What we're going to be doing is putting a modification in here that converts it to a composite video signal, audio and video, so you get much better sound. So there's a guy on the internet and I got this off of eBay, uh, Vintage Gaming and More. I bought two mod kits. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these out. I'm going to assemble them because it's a do-it-yourself assemble type kit. I'm going to show you along the way as we make the kit. And I'm also going to talk about the Atari as we open this up. But anyways, I paid uh, about $20 a kit for these each. Um, and we'll see how the results are. And I went online and printed the instructions here for the 4-switch Atari, which is what I'm going to be modifying. And again, the reason why I'm doing this is I want to improve the picture quality because anytime you use a channel 3 signal, which is what these units give out, um, you're never going to get as good of a picture as you would with an a audio video uh, type connector. Also, channel 3 type RF inputs are becoming obsolete because because nobody's using that style anymore. So what this does is this will keep this particular unit more modern because it'll work with any television that's on the market. Okay, I'll be back in a little bit after we get the kit assembled. Okay, I split up the two kits so these are actually identical. There's two of them. Here's the circuit board. There's a res uh, I'm sorry, a transi transistor that needs to be soldered in, two resistors, and then we have three jacks which have to be installed to the back of the Atari, and then two sets of wires that have been pre-bundled. They need to be soldered to either ends of, of this particular board. I'm going to go ahead and do that to both of these just so I have them both pre-assembled, and then we're going to start doing the work to the actual Atari. The kits have both been assembled and so if I take a look here they're both, as I said, they're both identical. You'll see that I soldered on the two resistors, the transistor, as well as the wires. And here's the other side. Got really good high quality solder connections. Looks like this board is gold plated so they, the guy did a really good job. Um, on making this, but it was really easy to follow, and um, there's instructions here that I printed off, so I followed those to a T. Now I'm going to put one of these aside for later, and I'm going to go ahead and take the Atari apart, and we're going to put one of them in. So I'll be back uh, once we get a little bit further along on the Atari. The Atari 2600 opens very easily. There are four screws. There's a screw here, here, and then two diagonal screws that go down here. So you remove those screws and the top will pop off. I've already done some work here, so I kind of reassemble this just for the purpose of illustration. Okay, the next step was to remove this aluminum or steel cage, or this cover, so you go through and you bend the little pieces of metal that are holding it in place, and then that comes off. Now, right here, oh, and it didn't zoom in. It always happens to me. There's a spot right in the center there. There used to be a transistor, and we had to clip and remove that. Here's the old resistor, I'm sorry, the transistor right here. Okay? So we clip that out of the area right here in the dead center of the video. Next thing to do was to, to disengage the RF circuit, which is what puts the, it gives the channel 3 output. So we're no longer going to have the ability to have a channel 3 output because we're putting a composite video output in. So what you do is you clip these five leads right here, and you can either remove the whole thing or you just push the board back. So I opted to push it back. I may just snap this off. Next step now is to solder the mod that we just made 
into place. So, and then we get to drill the holes for the jacks. So, we'll be back uh, when we're another step further along. Okay, all the soldering is complete. One wire gets soldered to a resistor that's on the board, and then three other wires are soldered to where the RF connectors were. So those are soldered in place. Here's the mod part. And then with a quarter inch drill bit, I drilled three holes, and you'll see we got a video, a left, and a right jack for composite. And you connect the grounds together, so the rings for all these, the outside is all connected via the black wire. And since the Atari is not stereo, the left and the right is actually mono, so we have these bridged here. And then yellow is the video lead, which is the red one that comes from here. So I followed the instructions, I used the drill bit, and I got these nice and tight and soldered in. Next step is to put this together and then try it. Now there's a potentiometer right here that has to be adjusted so there, you know, we put a game on and we see what the color looks like and a good game is Pitfall because we want to make sure that that green matches properly. So this is kind of a color adjustment. Got my son here who's uh, helping me out as well. Um, one also thing to note is that, you know, the Atari really is not very complex. It's got four switches that are, are, are right in front here, plus a couple in the back. You can see the processors and such here. Um, number of resistors, only a couple capacitors. There's a capacitor down here, and then there's also a capacitor right here. And I'm not going to test these and replace them. My guess is that they're fine, but um, I would guess that this particular, uh, this, type, this particular board will last a very long time because there's not a lot of stuff that could really go out um, unless you have a chip or something go bad. So we're going to go ahead and plug it in, we'll fire it up and we'll see how it looks. I'll be back shortly. Okay, here's the finished product. In fact, the picture quality is fantastic. Um, I'm actually very impressed with the way that this turned out. So you're, you're actually seeing it on a plasma television. Down here, um, Here's the Atari. It's not fully put back together yet, but you'll see the modification in the board. And I've got left, right, and uh, composite video output going into a input on a VCR here, which is then actually turning it into HDMI, which is putting it on the plasma screen. But it's working very, very well. And I'm not going to play any specific games, but the sound is also very, very, very crisp which is a little bit uh, much clearer than it used to be. I'm going to go ahead and try another game just for comparison. So that's Pitfall, and that's one that we actually uh, used to test to make sure that the colors looked right, that the greens looked proper. So let me go ahead and turn that off, and we're going to go ahead and try Ms. Pac-Man. We'll try this. This one has a lot of colors, as I recall. That's also very, very clear. Let's go ahead and start it. a lot louder than I want it to be. But anyways, uh, and in fact, this isn't zooming in. Actually, there we go. It looks much clearer now. But uh, anyways, sound and video looks great. I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. And I think that's a job that's complete. So now I just need to do this modification on another Atari that um, I wish to modify within my collection because I've got a few of these. I might actually do the newer version of the 2600, which is the very small one. There's the completed project now. I didn't use the little sticky foam that they included. I just put some glue from a glue gun in here. Um, and this is now fastened in a spot to where it's not going to move around. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. One thing I'd mention, I wanted to mention to you, is that there's this electronics cleaner you can get. And I get this at Fry's Electronics, and you can also get it at Radio Shack. What it is is it's a cleaner that you can use on contacts and switches. So I actually cleaned all of these, and you'll... I don't know if you can really hear them, but they have a very good distinctive click to them because now any grime or buildup has been removed. So that kind of ensures that the switches are in good shape. I also sprayed a little bit into the cartridge slot and also the joystick ports. That way it kind of shines and, and deoxidizes the contacts. So we are done. As I said, I'm going to put this back together and now I'm going to go play some Atari. So I hope this video was interesting. Again, if you have any questions, please go ahead and uh, post uh, any comments at the end of this video on YouTube. Thanks. Have a great one.